The one biggest single thing that teaches you jazz is playing jazz tunes. All the greats have played jazz standards. I really believe it's super important how you start learning jazz and that you learn it the best way possible. Because there can be a lot of clutter getting in the way when you're starting to play jazz. Fix this clutter and get started the best way. You need to know your chord tones and be able to play a chord tone solo. And you must know your arpeggios because a huge part of the jazz language is arpeggios going up and down. And it's not enough just to know the arpeggios. You need to be able to put them into your play. And you need to be able to play the scales over the course of the tunes you're playing and play beautiful melodies with the scales. Everything must have epic rhythm. You need to add rhythm to everything. These are the most important things to learn when you're playing jazz. I picked the great tune of Blue Bosses to start taking this endeavor. It has a relatively short form and great chords to play over. Start by checking out the chord tones. <laughs> I separate the arpeggios from the chord tones because learning the chord tones is literally learning the basic sound of the chord tones, seeing how they slowly connect together the chord tones in between and learning the sound. Whereas arpeggios are small pieces of solo you actually add into your solo play. We'll get to arpeggios in just a bit. I want to give you a heads up, all this material I'm talking about is written out extensively in the Blue Bossa solo manual. And this solo manual is on Patreon and the download link is in the description. <laughs> So these two exercises are basically just play your chords up and play your chords down. I'm not talking about arpeggios, I'll get to that. And a small shortcut learning this. It's important that you learn the chord tones and the chord names, but it's very important that you connect these two. And it's all about these connections, that you have four chord tones under one name. So learn to think the chord name and then automatically have the four chord tones. Every time you learn a couple of chord tones, start playing a little solo with them. <laughs> think that the chord tones just up and down in this exercise is enough. You really need to play music with the chord tones. In this whole etude I play only chord tones with a few exceptions. The etude is on Patreon. And if you think it's difficult to play a chord tone solo and it's boring it's only chord tones, you're wrong. <laughs> You can play really elaborate chord tone solos just by adding lots of rhythm and be creative. It's very important that you start hearing the chord tones belonging to the chord. Play more than just the chord tones up and down. Play melody at beautiful rhythm. <laughs> Getting back to just playing the chord tones up and down. When you do this, you really sound like an exercise. And no one ever of the great jazz players played like an exercise. But when you start playing these small improvised melodies, you train your ears, you train your fingers, you train your coordination to work together. This is what I was talking about. Jazz is connection. <laughs> get used to taking the good choices playing beautiful jazz. So let's get on to arpeggios. I say you need to play your arpeggios and they are different from the chord tones. <laughs> arpeggios are the chord tones but there are lots of extension etc etc and there's lots of rhythm to add. All arpeggios are great structures to add into your jazz playing. Basically you can take an arpeggio and use a copy paste function. Just add it into your line, see if it sounds great. Again you see it, if you play the chord tones just up and down you get a boring solo. But if you start mixing them up using your creativity, you get beautiful melodies just using these chord tones. So the arpeggios has a different feel to it because they are small melodic parts you can add directly into your solo. When you have learned the chord tones, get started on learning your arpeggios. Learn them in different forms, learn them in up and down, learn them with different rhythms. In the Blue Bossa solo manual, there are lots of these exercises taking you through the arpeggios, both adding new rhythm and extensions. In this example, you probably both see and hear that I'm using descending arpeggios. <laughs> struggling to make this sound melodic. And I'm not saying that the root position of a descending arpeggio is boring. You just need more material. Try mixing up the arpeggios because you can play beautiful solos just using arpeggios. When you have more patterns to choose from, you can get a more interesting solo and you can play elaborate melodies. <laughs> using the 
arpeggios both up and down, and sometimes I'm adding a passing tone into the mix. Mostly I use the passing tones between the root and the third here. So about these passing tones, we get to them in the scale part, but the passing tones are the tones that falls outside the arpeggios. The lesson manual has of course a lot of these exercises. What I did in the lesson manual this week is put tons of etudes in there. Because I want you to be a melodic player, I really want you to learn the melodic playing using your chord tones and using your scales. But when you want to get a little extra out of it, you have to get the Blue Buster solo manual. It's a 120 page manual consisting of exercises, licks, arpeggios, scales, guide tones, lots of solo etudes. The Blue Buster solo manual is how you learn to play a great solo on Blue Buster. The link is in the description. When I just talked about the passing tones, I already mentioned the scales. Let's dive into the scales and the passing tone for a bit. I also said that the passing tones are the tones that fall next to the chord. So you have the D minor chord. Then you have the D minor scale here next to it. The passing tones are the E, the G, the B flat. And this is probably the most misunderstood concept of all. The scale is not the chord. The scale holds all the tones. But playing the scale does not directly represent the chord tones. Because if you play the scale from the E, you get an E half diminished sound. And the E half diminished chord, that's definitely not the D minor 7 chord. So how do you make the scale sound like the right chord? And you probably knew this, you must learn your scale. So playing the scales up and down is a great technical exercise and it's a great way to hear the scales. But when you use the scales in jazz, make sure you reference to the chord. The sound of the scale should be the sound of the chord. When I was working out these scales, I made these blue boss etudes. is emphasize the chord sound in the scale. I'm literally taking out a part of the scale and inserting this into my etude. And what I've done here is taking out the five scale tones, the A, the G, the F, the E, the D, and those five tones are the first five tones in the D minor scale. And then you probably notice that when I'm playing the scale, I emphasize the chord tones. on the beats are going towards the beats with the chord tones. In this way I connect the scales into the chords, keeping the integrity of the chord sound when I'm using the scales in the solo. The sound of the chords are resembled by the scales. In all the solo parts I have really worked on getting extensive rhythm added to it. Because when you just play your exercise up and down you really sound like an exercise. And what I said before, no one of the greatest have ever sounded like an exercise. They sound great. Though you need these exercises to get a clear sound and a clear form of the chords to really know your material when you start soloing. Remember to add the rhythm into everything. The lesson manual is filled up with great exercise and lots and lots of etudes. So tap into it to get a great, great start on soloing on Blue Bossa. Download the PDF on Patreon. But when you really want to check out improvising on Blue Bossa from the start, you need to get the Blue Bossa solo manual. The Blue Buster solo manual have tons of chord scale, guide tone lines, target note exercise and jazz etudes. Links to both the Blue Buster solo manual and the lesson manual of this week is on Patreon. The links are in the description. Since arpeggios is such a great part of the jazz language, I really invite you to check out this video on arpeggios. This is how to make your arpeggios sound pro. Play music, have fun.